Hello everybody, my name is Danny, I'm an ex Jehovah's Witness, and today I'm going to be reviewing the 2024 annual meeting. Since our last annual meeting, Jehovah has directed his people in many different ways, reflecting his love and wisdom. Of course, the most significant occurrence is that we've welcomed back thousands who had been removed from the congregation. And certainly there has been great joy in heaven, but here on earth as well. The next part of our program relates to the remarkable response we've seen to Jehovah's mercy expressed to those who had been removed from the congregation. It's a video entitled Blessings of Jehovah's Mercy. Please enjoy. It's heartwarming to hear reports of how Jehovah has blessed congregation elders as they search for those who have been removed from the congregation. For example, in the first four months after the 2024 Governing Body Update Number 2, in the South Africa and Philippines branch territories combined, more than 1,200 have come back to the congregation. Here in the United States branch territory, over 5,000 brothers and sisters have been welcomed back. In the Brazil branch territory, some 5,200 publishers have been reinstated. And in the Central America branch territory, over 5,300 individuals have come back to the congregation. The numbers are exciting, but we can't overlook that each of these dear ones have returned to Jehovah and Jehovah loves them. That gave me the creeps. It a willies and the creeps. I don't know why, it just, it really did especially the way he ended that it just came off as again like Stephen let hearing and seeing him talk for the first time it it almost makes you want to off yourself because it's like that is just overwhelmingly creepy feeling and disturbing feeling to like be talked to like that it's very much like a talked down level of like you're just too stupid to understand what i'm saying so i'm going to talk to you like this isn't it great Now we'll get hit by a truck. No, <laughs> but like, what? Well, it just disturbed me. One person had been removed from the congregation uh, some 17 years ago. And uh, on his own, he was watching JW Broadcasting. He, uh, he saw the update. He said, this, this is, it's time to come home. <laughs> And so he called the Kingdom Hall. He left a voicemail and uh, the brothers received his message. They reached right out to him. Uh, a Bible study was started and uh, very happily, he too has progressed, progressed to being uh, reinstated and uh, his parents were able to fly in and be there at the Kingdom Hall that night. He was reinstated. He later said, this is truly a homecoming. I am. I feel so many bad negative things about their reaction to that. I, I can't imagine what it would feel like if I was this person that they're talking about. And they just like, I'm crying. Fuck you. <laughs> Probably go and leave again and be like, I ain't coming back. Because like, it's so almost demented feeling to me internally. Of like, it's just, I'm just so like squirming on the inside trying to get out of myself. I'm like, Ugh. It's gross. It's 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 insulting. It's disturbing. Like, no, this should not be your reaction. I'm sorry. It just shouldn't be. I understand why it is. It's because of your psychology. Because you're well indoctrinated. You're uh, in a cult, you know, and the cult has it to where obviously you're gonna feel like that because you think they're saving themselves or you're saving them. Or it's like it's a it's a it's a it's a proof of God's love. You know, Jehovah God's love. No, it's not. And it's just, it disgusts me to my core to see that kind of reaction. It's just like, it's so incredibly insulting that they have this reaction to me. It's, it's, it's deeply insulting because it shows that like they only give a fuck and they only care if you are one of them. One of us, one of us, one of us. Otherwise you can go fuck yourself.
I'm gonna cry because oh he saved fuck off just fuck off that is that is so insulting it, it's ugh. and i understand it's like probably a pretty common thing in any religious community or, or the very least in any christian communities totally get that and it makes sense that they would feel that way because again the indoctrination and the way it works but just fuck off Ugh. It's like if you were working for a company who just absolutely exploited you to no end and kept lying to you and making bully you basically by making you a butt of a joke and constantly harassing you or, you know, leaving you out of things, leaving you the last to know, all these things, you know, setting you up to fail here and there because they thought it would be funny. Like, if you experienced that and you left because... You're not going to fucking take that. Well, right on you. Good on you that you did that. But if you came back because you heard maybe they had a leadership change and like half of the people that were there that were the main ones who would harass you and bully you weren't there anymore. So you go back and you hear, oh, it's a lot better. Okay, great. So you go back and after like a month or something like that, you find yourself being treated like that again or more likely in this case. You go back and you find them having this kind of reaction where they're trying not to cry or they are crying and bawling because there's like, oh my god, I care so much about it. No, you fucking didn't. You're a fucking pathological liar. You're a manipulative piece of shit. Like, fuck off and fuck you. Like, that's what this is like to me. That's what this would be like to me. And it is to me. So... That's why I have this reaction to it, because it's just like I'm disgusted and repulsed by it, because it's like this is could not be more like almost violatingly insulting to see and hear this. It just feels so wrong. See another side of Jehovah. See, there it is. As our father. And you see how much he loves his children. And then he allows us to have a part in helping them to come back to him. And so we get to reflect his mercy too. Oh my God. It's such a privilege. I hate this so much. It's really Everything noteworthy about that, how it. emotional some of these testimonials are. The people telling these stories are getting choked up when they're describing removed Jehovah's Witnesses or disfellowshipped Jehovah's Witnesses returning. Even in cases where it doesn't seem they're talking about their own family members, they're still getting choked up on camera. I feel there's some interesting psychology going on here. It's almost Massively. as though on some perhaps subconscious level, Jehovah's Witnesses recognize how cruel shunning is. So they will leap on any example of shunning ceasing of shunning ending as a reason for joy and elation and getting all teary-eyed and i thought that story of of the man who was reinstated and his family flying in to be at the meeting where he was reinstated doesn't that just show the impact that shunning is having yeah. You know, these are parents who previously will have been having nothing whatsoever to do with their son, who will have spent years treating their son as though he is dead. Yep. And all of a sudden, because of a technicality, because of some new light that means that it's easier for him to get reinstated, all of a sudden he gets to get the thumbs up from the organization and from his local elders and then they can book a flight and then they can come and sit next to their son and treat him like a normal human being 17 years too basically two decades if you think about it in context it's closer to being a quarter of a fucking century that's the other aspect of it that just violates me to my core and makes me so sick to my stomach and like so agitated about it is seeing those reactions is because of exactly what he just said exactly that aspect of it it's it could not be more viscerally insulting and just all the negative emotions that come up because it's just and hurt and everything else because it's like how you don't you these people genuinely do not see how sick twisted and potentially even demented 
that way of being is and that kind of treatment that reaction it actually genuinely is pretty fucking twisted it's peer abuse first off it's major massively traumatically abusive and again like i've said before you are a your own independent autonomous living being you have the fucking built-in ability, whether you believe it's a grand creator like Jehovah God or not, who gave you that ability, who put that in your head, to be able to go out there and exercise your autonomy and your logic and your rationality, your your ethics and your morals and use them. Like, when you know that something isn't right, fucking make the choice to rebel, aka to do the opposite of whatever is expected of you. That's the right thing to do. That's what you should expect from your fucking self and other people that you care for and hope that they care for you. Because if they actually reflect that, if they actually show that via their actions, not just their fucking words, apparently 9-11's happening out here, they wouldn't hesitate to defy, in this case, doctrine. They wouldn't hesitate to risk being removed themselves. They just wouldn't. They wouldn't care because their compassion and their genuine love unconditional love and care for you is going to always be over the top of anything else. It's just, that's a fact. You're an independent living being. And even more so, if you're an adult, fucking act like it. Fucking use the beautiful fucking autonomy and independent thinking that Jehovah God gave you and fucking understand that he's not going to fucking support that shit. Not at all. There's no fucking way. He'd want you to do that. I guarantee he'd want you to fucking defy what the governing body is telling you. What your doctrine dictates. He would want you to fucking defy that without hesitation in an instant. Because it's the right thing to do. You. The point is you have that fucking ability. And they act like and seem to sincerely have convinced themselves that they don't. You do. You're just choosing not to adhere to it. Not to use it. It's just insane to me how illogical, irrational, sick, twisted, upside down, back around, and demented religious people's minds are. It, it's insane to me. And like, they don't even see this. And this is something that absolutely could double up your trauma, is having this exact kind of reaction like this guy for 17 years did. It could actually make it so much worse for you. It's so much more of a struggle. And a, and a difficult thing to get through and to live through. Because where is all this coming from? How could you do what you did before for 17 fucking years? And all of a sudden, now you, you're you you're so excited. You're going to fucking pay probably, if it's how, all literally across the country, like potentially a few thousand fucking bucks just to fucking fly there, get a rental car, fucking get there to the whatever the hall is, wherever that is you need to go, and then fucking visit with your 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 kid you literally acted like didn't exist or was fucking dead and was a serial killer that died for like 17 fucking years just because your doctor told you the governing body told you a bunch of human beings told you no you have to do that it'll never be not it will never not be something that will piss me off and really agitate me and cause these kinds of visceral reactions because I'm kind of feeling it myself, even though it's secondhand in place of somebody else. It's just arguably the gravest, most deep insult you could give. Back in 1979, my father was removed from the congregation and I was eight. You can grow up thinking, okay, maybe, you know, my dad will come back in a decade goes by, two decades goes by, three decades goes by, and you don't want to lose hope, but it does tend to make you think that maybe this person might not ever come back. I get a phone call, and it's a friend of mine I've known for many years. He and another brother went to go see my dad, and he even accepted a study. At this point, I... <laughs> I said, wow, I said, that's, that's, uh, that's great because most of my childhood and my entire adult life, I have not known a father who was serving Jehovah. Y you should. Again, 
how fucking tone deaf and disconnected from reality do you have to be as a person to not see this as not a positive, but a massive fucking negative? They're like, oh, this is a celebration thing. Here's the music. You have to be such a stupid motherfucker to actually even buy into this kind of doctrine. To actually see it this way. And twist it so far from reality that you're like, no, this is a beautiful thing. Of course we should be emotional. No, it's not. It's one of the most sick, twisted things you could do. Because you have everything so fucking wrong and far from reality and how actually life in itself really fucking is. Think about that. I know what that's like, even though I did have my dad present. I know what it's like to, to grow up and still to this day feel like you have that empty gap where you just never had a dad. Because there's a difference, obviously, between being a father and being a dad. A father just basically means, oh, you donated your sperm to whoever your mother is, and you got created. Congratulations. That's what a father truly is. That's all it is. A dad is the one who's the best friend. He's the teacher. He's the guide. He's the, you know, he's a, he's an actual fucking parent, and he's always there. He's an anchor for you that every fucking person in existence will have always needed and will always need. If they don't have that... There's a major fucking set of issues and potential major problems that can transpire as a result without having it. I know what it's like to have that gap. I still have it. I still struggle with it off and on. It's really difficult to, to navigate that fucking psychology, especially when you have contact with that person that's supposed to have been your dad, but wasn't. And even more so if it, this kind of thing happens where it's like, it's a change. It fucks with your head even more because now that gap want, has that longing and desperately wants to go back and cling to that person. And yet, you know, you can't trust that person because of whatever happened. And in my, in my case, that's what it is. But in this case, it's like, oh, yeah, they were forced to abandon their own wife, their own children permanently. Unless they became a good little obedient safe and discreet slave of Jehovah God again. And that's it. That's the only possibility where they'd be back allowed in your life. They literally are straight up in this instance celebrating, destroying, and tearing apart an entire family. Causing a very traumatic and, and suffering heavy gap inside of somebody's heart and their life of not having that person that they desperately need in their life that everybody fucking needs it doesn't matter if it's a mom or a dad you you need both badly and like it's so tone deaf and it's so twisted and far removed from reality that they actually think this is something to celebrate that it's a good thing even though it's literally doing exactly the opposite in reality to anybody who actually has even a shred of intellect in their head a shred of logic that they are capable of using it's just insane to me that that this is a thing i just i don't get it i can't fathom how incredibly easily manipulated and stupid you have to be of a human being to allow this to happen and allow yourself to see it as a celebratory positive way when it's obviously a negative probably amplifying the trauma more it's just it's incredible to me it's something i just cannot comprehend i cannot fully fathom how the fuck we get to this point it's just insane to me I, I understand it's basic human logic human brains are incredibly easily manipulable and people therefore are incredibly fucking stupid but it's still and easily intimidated apparently but it's still just like how why which is one of my struggles with human beings actually and understanding humanity i'm like why do you not make any sense humans make no fucking logical sense ever and it just drives me fucking ballistic and it's like, and it has my entire life because I have an incapability to understand our own species. It's just like, it doesn't compute. Nothing computes. Everything they think is logical is actually highly illogical. It's just like, I want to scream into a void into perpetuity, I swear. You know, and so I understand it's actually basic human psychology, meaning it's just humans being humans, but it still doesn't 
make any sense. So it's still impossible for me to fathom and comprehend. I just... This could, this should be its own fucking video, and it probably will be. Just this alone, because it's... Fuck. This one, guaranteed, is going to be on the uh, trauma and abuse playlist, as well as the Jehovah's Witness playlist. So, you can view it either place, and I highly recommend you share it with people who have been through trauma, whether it's anything associated with religion, Jehovah's Witnesses, or not. I just highly recommend you do that, because this is a great way to look at the reflection and look at this cognitive dissonance and the disconnect between reality and what they think is reality. And there's a third party in that, and that's the person who's experienced the trauma. They're looking at this and they're thinking, what the fuck? You know, like, what, what do I do with this? And then you have the fourth party, which is the people on the outside looking in. But maybe you haven't experienced any of this, but they see it and they know it's wrong. And it's like, what's happening here? You, you, they see the disconnect that everybody has involved directly. The other three parties. And it's just like, oh. Never, ever underestimate the lengths Jehovah will go to to save one sheep. One sheep, so, yeah, it's... Yeah, it's, uh... <laughs> if, if you weren't a believer in Jehovah's, in Jehovah's mercy before, no one will ever be able to say, when everything is over in the system of things, that Jehovah didn't care enough he didn't make the efforts. He didn't send anybody out. Uh, yeah, you can't, you really, you really can't say that because Jehovah's making sure that the extra effort was made. Very touching indeed. But it wasn't just a one-time invitation. In In imitation of our Father Jehovah, the elders continue to try to render assistance to those who have been removed from the congregation. They continue to reach out to them. Wasn't that an extraordinary moment? That was the moment where, where I kind of sat up and thought, oh, oh, <laughs> I've not seen that before. I've not seen a governing body member get visibly emotional on stage to the point where he just kind of shuts down and needs to gather himself and needs to be kind of urged on by the audience. But yeah, just the story as well of the guy who talks about his father being reinstated after decades. He's saying things like, how can anyone say that Jehovah isn't merciful, you know? Jehovah put forth all of this effort just for one, just for one sheep, and no one can say that Jehovah doesn't try. And I'm sorry, mate, I just, I can't be on board with you there because you should never have been severed from your father, or you should never have had your relationship with your father interfered with in that way. And that's just, that's disgusting. That is, there's no excuse for that sort of behavior. And I'm not surprised that he's getting all emotional now, that he's able to, that he's being given permission by the organization yeah, exactly. to have a relationship with his father again. But does this make the Jehovah's Witness religion a shining beacon of God's mercy? Absolutely not.